They're everyone's favorite topic. We are discussing indicators today, guys. We're going to walk you through some of the basic indicators for both day trading and longer term swing trading ideas, how to set them up, which ones to maybe pay more attention to and which ones to really not think about or even use on a chart. I think it's safe to say though, right off the bat here, guys, and we should say anything you are seeing on a chart has already happened and taken place in the past. So it's not going to tell you anything important going forward. So let's, with that, discuss some of the more common indicators that you may find uh, in a day trading setup. Exactly. And like th that first point you said, Brandon, of course, is going to be uh, the most important. There is nothing about an, any particular indicator that tells the future uh, or that is going to give you the, the perfect entry, the perfect exit. So we just want to go over the most simple ones here. And I think uh, for day traders, and of course, on our live show, we are day trading, uh, <laughs> day trade the world, obviously. Uh, so I want to start with volume weighted average price or otherwise known as VWAP. So it's a simple calculation that yields a simple visible uh, result on the chart here, guys. And I'm going to give you the definition, of course. Um, this is a one-minute chart, and the period is going to matter. Uh, with a lot of day traders, they use one minute, three minute, or five minute. And uh, you're going to see what the, that red line here that just sort of coasts along and looks a little bit like uh, a smooth uh, moving average. And we'll talk about how to utilize it in a little bit. But you just simply take the sum of the price and the volume in each individual time period, and then divide that by the sum of volume uh, for the periods before it. And you get this nice, smooth average. Now, of course, as volume picks up, you have more robust data coming through. So there's a little bit more significance to VWAP you know, later on in the session than there might be at the open. Um, I will say this, of course, we have done a video specifically on VWAP itself in terms of getting a more in-depth definition. Make sure you check that one out. I think it's a good resource. And then it comes down to how do you set it up. First things first, if, you, if something is going to chart what the actual uh, so you know, sort of volume weighted average price is, so indicated where the, where the, the most dollars of, sh uh, of shares have transacted and gives you a nice smooth average, you want to make sure it's displayed prominently on the middle of your chart. Clearly, it has to be imposed on top of the charts here so that you can see your candles uh, go right into that price, move away from it. A lot of times it is used for trend trading. Um, institutions will use volume weighted average price as a metric uh, to beat during the day. If there was an institution that, say, had to buy a bunch of AMC, maybe they're caught short, uh, then they would be, every single time it goes below the volume weighted average price, they're trying to buy those shares because if they can beat that price, that looks good for their end of the day result in picking shares up. So you want to make sure it's displayed very prominently in the middle of your chart. On my one minute chart, it is the only thing I use because I want it to stand out there and absolutely pop for me. Now, what does it actually mean here? So I talked about institutions that will buy below volume weighted average price, and if they're looking to accumulate a position, they might buy less shares as it gets uh, farther away, or maybe they get desperate as it gets to the end of the day and they have to get that order filled. How you can use it, I find, is it's good for profit-taking targets if you have bought a dip, because a lot of times you will see uh, it gravitate towards that price and slow down a little bit. You get consolidation around there as there's more transactions around that particular price. So you get a little bit of a buy the dip, know you have a profit center there. I don't like this for stop order placement. I don't believe it's a good line in the sand to use because everybody tends to have it on their chart and so it gets hunted as a stop and often will wick past it by very small amounts uh, without actually breaking out and then suddenly you've used it in a bad way to get into a trade or out of a trade at the worst possible time frame. Another point about when not to use it, I went over how it's less significant in the open as it might be in the close. Uh, you can see AMC actually halted to the downside here. I don't think it's very valuable at 9.36 to say, oh, look at that. We're going to consolidate off of VWAP here at $60. In the first five or 10 minutes, you can probably throw it out the window altogether for that type of support and resistance idea. Later on in the session, however, when you have it make a bottom and you see this consolidation here, and it's trying to break the downward trend it's been all morning, the break of VWAP later on in the session is a little more significant. And then as it gravitates towards and there's short people, shorts caught, you want to think about buying in front of it, guys. So it suddenly turns into a trend trade, break to the upside. In the afternoon, it's a much better place to buy dips in front of and have short targets. In the morning, no, 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 do not use that at 935.
Oh my God, that's uh, basically, thank you, Neil, for VWAP. Uh, that's almost exactly what I was gonna say about my topic and what to use here for a very, very simple technical indicator. I'm gonna be talking about simple moving averages. So simple indicator requires a simple title, and that's what it is here, a simple moving average. And I've actually picked the two most commonly used ones, I believe, anyways. And again, you're gonna set this up based on how you trade and the symbols that you're looking at, the moves you're looking for. But I have right here a 15 period moving average and a five period moving average. The red is the 15. You're gonna see it's a little slower uh, to react while the five is right on top of all of these candles. This is a one minute chart. So what you're gonna notice about a moving average is it simply combines the average price of the time periods listed. So this is gonna be the last five minutes, the last 15 minutes, and then it simply just plots it based on you know, the high, the open, the low, the close. We can show you how to set that up as well, but your charting will be probably a little bit different. For us, you right click, you go to customization, and then you can simply check on here, where do you want this? So you go to simple moving average, Input price, right? High, low, some different calculations there. High, low, close, open, whatever you really want. I choose the close of the chart of the uh, one period. So that to me makes the most sense. We'll use close. So that's what that is for that. So simple moving average. What are you looking for as a strategy? Look, uh, we started this off by saying exactly what Neil said. I don't like to use this in the pre-market. So down here where all this volume, you can sort of see the volume at the bottom there uh, starts off. You can see that's very, very important. We don't start to use that. What you're looking for here is a trend. So I use the 15 period moving average as a trend. I mean, it, it's this one's easy, but the trend is your friend to the downside here. That trend doesn't really change until you get the crossover. So that's really what we're looking for here, is when does the five period cross the 15 period? So remember, the five's gonna be a bit faster than the 15, so the first trade here actually happens, this is BlackBerry, actually happens right off the open. So again, forget about the first couple minutes, I actually extend down, the first break happens and you go down to 9.37 here. So the first break happens and we start to move to the downside. This indicates a short opportunity. So if you go down, it actually is right into here. So this is where, again, remember where the cross happens? That's not the price. You have to look at where it actually happens on the chart. So down here, so you would be short about 1840 or so on BlackBerry. Okay, so you're taking that based on the crossing. Where do you get out? Hey, look, that's up to you. But if you play it very, very simply, and that's what we're doing with this uh, video, where to get out? Well, get out when it crosses back up. That's it, right? Once the trend changes is where you'll start to get out. So here it comes down, trend changing. So remember where you're short. So you're short right here, 1840. The trend changes, 1711. So Merry Christmas, that's a good win. And you could actually use this to go long on that. I wouldn't. I would take the initial trade, watch it fall back down, get out there. Then you're one for one. Now you kind of watch it. It's very, very bumpy, bumpy, bumpy again here. Maybe this is where you decide to go short, okay? Again, changing the direction up again. So it crosses this time to the downside, giving you another short opportunity right here. So you're short 1793, and where does it break back above? Right here, 1765. So a small win there on the trade, but a win is a win, and then look, when you're using a chart, I think this is very, very important to understand. We can't predict the future. So I have no idea that this is about to happen. But again, here's another break back down to the downside. So you can take all of this again. If you start shorting in here, bang to the downside. It's not a perfect indicator, but it's a simple one and one that you can follow for your first couple trades. Let's talk about the next one now. We uh, promised three. We'll give you a third and the final, which is going to be volume it's almost the uh blood source of the market if you don't have participation and you don't have people executing trades you don't really have any movement in a stock so we need volume to get movement in a stock so let's jump right into uh having a look at uh, volume here guys i'm going to show you a chart of rkt in new york because uh, it gives you a great example down here at the bottom i'll make this even bigger maybe if i can to uh, expand this a little bit and discuss why it's so important to understand where the participation is, where it isn't, and why you want to be involved when volume is on the chart. Understand, first of all, 
all volume is short, uh, showing you on a chart is simply the amount of executed trades. So it's calculating off of time and sales how many shares are traded within a specific time frame. So my chart here is a three minute chart. So each one of these volume bars at the bottom is going to show you three minutes worth of volume that was traded within this candle. So if I come in during the day and say, okay, I wanna look at Rocket today for whatever reason, say they had earnings or there's some sort of news catalyst and I believe because of that news catalyst I want this stock or, or believe this stock should be trading higher well one of the things you can use to confirm a bias on a stock to confirm that indeed yes it should be trading higher is volume so once we see this initial opening range traded on the stock the first thing we can point out before we get to that is look at the difference between pre-market volume down here and then once the actual market opens and more participation comes in and makes it much easier both on a liquidity side and on a movement side to be involved with Rocket. But let's focus on this move right here. So this is about 1020 in the morning. We get a nice tight consolidation. And again, remember, we're looking at Rocket because of a catalyst that we have come up with in the pre-market, understanding that we believe this stock should be trading higher. Let's go back to the chart. Uh, this candle right here, we start to get volume coming in. So you confirm the move with a higher volume candle and the close of this volume candle uh, in conjunction with a green candle and a close higher than a previous consolidation. And look what, what follows. The volume that follows in this move is the highest volume of the day, taking the stock from uh, just over 20, say 2010, right up to 2110. So this move here, uh, confirmed with higher volume on the day, is a dollar move to the upside. And I want you to note the second part of this thought. So we're confirming a long bias and a long trade with increasing volume. Look what happens when the stock starts to come back. So we get the initial move to 21. We get this blow off candle where long trades maybe come to an end, buyers run out. And look at what happens when the stock starts to come back in. Volume also starts to come back in. So the point here is the move to the upside is confirmed with increasing volume, uh, making it a positive momentum trade. To the downside then, we see decreasing volume as sellers take profit. So hope that helps, guys. We confirmed uh, volume on the upside. You can look at it to the downside uh, the very same way. Uh, you want the bias to be in favor of your prior catalyst when it comes to volume. We talked about VWAP, we talked about a simple moving average, and we gave you a volume indicator as well. Hope you like that one. Let's go to Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this helpful information. Dear viewers, please subscribe to this channel to see more great videos.